right, it says it is. Good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody on this beautiful day. It's a gorgeous day out there. Look, get a little warm, Ricky says. It's a little warm outside. It was only 63 when we came in, but uh, looks like it's warmed up. Warmed up good. Beautiful sunny day. You got us a song, man? Yeah, let's do uh, 77 today. 77. Everybody sing now. Yes, sir. Let's get a good start for him today. 77 is higher ground, guys. That's uh. Hopefully you've been thinking about that higher ground, huh? So, I mean, that we as Christians should be. I mean, think about that. If you're going to spend eternity there, you better uh, you better be really looking forward to it, huh? Well, it'll be better than here, though. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe it undoubtedly will because, you know, the Bible tells us we haven't even imagined how that will be. I mean... And think about it, when you travel in the USA, you see a lot of things. And, well, and some of you have been fortunate enough to go out of the country, see a lot of beautiful places. Absolutely. Just imagine, man, just, you know, have you ever been laying in bed sometimes? This is when it gets me when I wake up in the middle of the night and I start thinking about that is, man, how beautiful heaven will be, you know? Well, if you can't even imagine it and you've seen all the beautiful things that you've seen here, I remember the first time I seen the ocean. I was 18, you know, because I was an old country boy. I hadn't been to the ocean. I mean, we all went seen was ponds, you know. And, uh, man, when I pulled up on that beach and looked out there, and as far as my, because I had good eyes then, as, <laughs> as far as you could see, you could see nothing but water. And I thought, man, that, it was just breathtaking. It was almost take your breath away to look at that. And I thought, man, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. So think about that. I mean, uh, That'll really be something. Uh, I just, I can't imagine. I just really can't imagine how beautiful heaven will be. So. You know, Dale, people use that ocean as an analogy for uh, uh, eternity also. Yeah. Uh, eternity, you know, what we got right now just a drop of the, in the ocean, though, it's what eternity is. Yeah, and ain't that something? If this is just a drop of it, huh? Yeah. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven. Those old uh, hymns, 
they have a lot of, uh, of preaching to them. They have a lot of, of Bible in them. And, uh, you know, that's the way it should be. Everything we should do should have something to do with God and how His goodness and His greatness. Uh, I'll read this here. Says, Good morning, I'm Pastor Randall Baker at New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky, which I do. I don't forget who I am, but I do forget to say that a lot of times. <laughs> I haven't got to the point where I forget who I am yet anyway. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get ready to uh, do the... the take up the offering, but we'll talk about where you can send in your donation if you want to. But right now we'll go out and take up some prayer requests. Uh, my uh, daughter-in-law Jessica's uncle Greg Kroll passed away uh, last week and uh, went to his funeral yesterday. So keep the Kroll family in your, in your prayers. And uh, Jessica also has a little cousin uh, named Mackenzie who's, uh, I think she's 15 now, and she's had all kinds of medical issues and was in the hospital. and. Uh, in a coma for a little while, but uh, they had to uh, uh, put a tube in her throat and it damaged her throat uh, to the fact, I guess, where the scarring closed up her throat. She couldn't breathe, so they had to go in and, and open that up a little bit. And I just saw her yesterday and she was telling me that they're going to go back in and do another surgery on her uh, pretty soon. So keep her in your prayers. She's had a lot of issues, uh, both uh, uh, physical and mental. Uh, issues as well. And she's got kind of a rough home life, I think. So keep Mackenzie is her name. Keep her in your prayers. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, they took my son-in-law Matt to the hospital yesterday in PNG. Yeah, real um, He's had um, something wrong with his heart. The doctor thinks that his, the front part of his heart is not working. So. Okay. Right. Keep keep Matt in here. He's trying to do a good yeah, thing there. Yeah, so keep him in your keep him in your prayers. His whole family as well. Absolutely. Anybody else? Did you, you had yours up? Me and my family. Elsie and her family. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Me and my family. Yep, and even her family. Who else has one? Well, Randall, remember Buddy this morning. He usually uh, asked you to pray for all of us. So just he does. remember him. He's not feeling too well. Right, absolutely. Of course, my brother Gene, he's still struggling a bit there. Okay. So remember him? Okay. Nikki? Um, I had a big thing. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Dick. Oh. I had a patient this week. She's going through some trouble. She was recently, well, she been okay with breast cancer. She was a breast cancer provider, but she's also having issues okay. for that. And so she keeps her in her prayers. She says she's really nervous, really scared. She doesn't want to have to go through all of that. Okay. Keep Dickie's patience. I know that if, you, if you're around somebody a lot, uh, you know, if, you, if, if it's somebody that she sees regularly, they come like family to you, know that. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard to see them struggling. Yes, ma'am. Uh, keep my sister-in-law and brother-in-law in your prayers. And our sister Ann's been feeling bad this week, and she's okay. going to go have some tests for on she's, her heart and stuff. Okay. How's her, how's her cancer? Is that, that Ann? Her cancer, is it completely in remission? or? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's doing. I was like, I, it's been a long time, man. Yeah, about the same time that I had mine. So it's been about fifteen, or sixteen. Regular about that. What is it? She sees her doctor regular okay. about that. I say she's had around the same time I did. So that's fifteen or sixteen yeah, she years had ago, right? Some kind of skin cancers and blood cancer. Blood cancer. Okay. Keep adding in your prayers. Yeah. Who else? Anybody else? Yeah, Terry. Faye Baker. We just need to remember her. Faye Baker. Yes, ma'am. My sister Juanita, they told her that the cancer had shrunk. Shrunk? Yeah. Well, that's good news, isn't it? Very good news. Good. She said to thank everybody that prayed. Amen. Amen. It's good, it's good to hear good news, isn't it? Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. As Amanda was telling me, she's still having a lot of struggles there, and her, uh, her blood pressure is doing a little better going down, but it's still high to the point that she could, uh, I guess, have a heart attack or stroke at any, at any time. So keep her in your prayer. She's been struggling a lot. Uh, you got the CPAP that helps you out quite a bit, though, right? She's able to sleep uh, pretty good now. So it's important if you don't get good sleep, you don't feel too good. You know, I guess when you start getting up in our age, I guess you realize how important sleep is sometimes. Brody, you wanting to say something? I thought you were raising your hand. Were you just saying, look at me? <laughs> you know, Ainsley? Uh, Allie wants to sing today. What is it, Allie? Speak up loud. Speak up, Allie. What is it? 
Hey, you guys know you're among friends here. Yeah. You can say whatever you want and we'll, we'll support you. She's working on a few things, Rainbow. She's got some, uh, uh, like a play going on that she's okay. been working on at, uh, what is it, Christ Church up there in First Baptist in Cold Springs there okay. that she's doing and, uh, and some songs up there. So maybe she'll have a, a okay. few more of them ready. Okay, good. Well, that'd be good. We'll be glad to have that. She's a little bit shy. Still. Oh, that's fine. Well, that's not a bad uh, characteristic to have. Dave, did you have your hand up, brother? Did you have your hand up? No, sir. Okay. I'm seeing things here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Y'all, Jeremy? Now, I know Jeremy had his hand up just now. What is it, Jeremy? Uh, another lineman was killed Thursday morning. Wow. That's a dangerous job. Really had to go get him down. That's not hard, or that's not easy. No, that's for sure. Yeah, we'll keep Jeremy and his co-workers and everybody in your prayers. All over the country, we've got people doing that dangerous job, and I'm sure plenty are hurt and killed all the time, and that's that's a scary, dangerous job. Y'all keep them in your prayers and, and pray for that family as well. Anybody else? Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? You might got a silent request on your heart because God does know your heart. He knows what we stand in need of even before we ask, but as we always say, He does tell us to ask. So let's go ahead and amen and well, come on up and we'll uh, go to the Lord in prayer.
And remember those evangelists that are traveling the highways. Lord, they work awful hard uh, to, to get the uh, souls saved too. So just remember them. And God, we ask too that you just remember this great nation of ours. We still love it. Still think it's the best place to be. Yep, we've got tons of problems, Lord, but there's none too big that you can handle. Right. So, God, we just want to lift each and every one of those uh, problems up to you. And just remember these leaders of ours, Lord. I pray that you would just speak to them so that they can lead us in the right way. Father, we ask all these favors and blessings in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 If you're able to, go ahead and stand up. If you're not, you can remain seated. We're going to go ahead and take up uh, an offering for the running of the church. And uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, if you would like to donate, uh, you can donate to the church uh, to P.O. Box 151 Alexandria, Kentucky 41001. And as to those on the video and the folks here at church, as always, we thank you for what you've given. Thank you for what you will give. And may God richly bless you for it. You got us another song? Right yeah, now? sir. Let's do 113. When I see the blood. When I see the blood. That's a good one. Yes, sir. I always did like that. Yep. That's 113. 113. When I see the blood. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross. Died for the sinner. Paid all his due. All who receive him never need fear, for he will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood,
You get to know those old songs and you really like them. They really become a part of you, don't they? Yes, they do. Uh, you know, we used to sing songs in here, uh, some old-fashioned songs, and, and they were really, uh, you know, they were really touching. They got, they got to you, and they really, they can really touch you sometimes. And the way some of the old folks uh, sang them really was really good, and they, you know, really felt good to you. But they, but it, it drummed up a whole lot of emotion in you. Uh, when my dad passed away, we were at his funeral, and uh, a lot of the old hymns were sang, and they were sung. You know, very uh, slowly and with a lot of feeling, and uh, and uh, my son Derek was about, I guess he's about five or six years old, and that uh, you know that just touched him, and he, he just broke down. He, you know, I had only for a long time he was crying, and uh, then they'd come to church, and every time they would sing those songs in the church, and he'd he'd better relive that then he'd start crying, and then, you know that would that would touch him. So those old songs do touch you. Those hymns do touch you. Yes, sir. I don't know if you guys have experienced it. Maybe you have. I've been driving along in the car before and singing those hymns, and you know, and the tears are coming in my eyes. It just, uh, you know, it just touches you. Something about them that just touches you. Have you got a song there, Dale, you, Tanya? Or find me one of those little books, Terry, one of those little blue books. Have you guys got a song? I've got it. I've got you a blue book, Terry. I'll, I'll do this one, Randall. Then. Okay. Right, you do one first. No, no, you go ahead, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do You do as many as you want. No, well, that's a lot of fine, buddy. Well, now, that ain't a blue book, is it? Well, it actually, it used to be. It, it was. The cover's just not on it. We've kind of used it pretty much. But well, that does show some good, good use. It? That, well, absolutely. Well, we, we got the use out of that right. one, anyway. So. Right. Yeah. I've never been to the place where Jesus was born. I wasn't able to hold him in my arms. I've never seen him, but it don't make much difference, you see. Though I wasn't there, I know Jesus is living in me. For I've got something that makes me know that he's real. I'm born of his spirit, and I know in my heart he lives. He's a sacrifice for all men, and his blood cleansed me from sin. I wasn't there, but I know that Jesus still lives. I wasn't there when they led my dear Savior away. To Calvary, they nailed him to the cross that day. From the manger to the cross, to a lonesome old grave, Jesus died but arose the third day. I wasn't there, but I know that Jesus still lives. For I've got something that makes me know that he's real. I'm born of his spirit, and I know in my heart he lives. He's a sacrifice for all men, and his blood cleansed me from sin. I wasn't there, but I know that Jesus still lives. No, I wasn't there, but I know that Jesus still lives. Plenty of time. I sang this one time before a uh, sermon that I did, and uh, I mean, other people have sang it here in church. We've sang it here for years, and my brother William said he really liked it, and uh, uh, I mean, everybody's very familiar with it. It's a great high mountain. Yeah. Once I stood at the foot of a great high mountain which I wanted so much to climb for on top of this mountain was a beautiful fountain which flowed with the water of life so I fell down on my knees at the foot of mountain and I cried oh Lord what must 
must I do to climb this mountain and to drink from this fountain which I have now in view? Then I heard a voice from the top of this mountain saying, Child, put your hand in mine. Start climbing slowly. Watch your step on the ledge and take one step at a time. So I started climbing slowly, just one step at a time. And the higher I got, the harder I climbed. I'm still climbing upward, and my journey's almost through. I'm nearing the top, and you ought to see the view. Oh, the water is flowing freely. There's enough to make you free. So friends, if you're thirsty, climb this mountain with me. Yes, a lot of good preaching in that song. Yeah, there is. A lot of good preaching in that song. And it, uh, I think that's by uh, Ralph Stanley, I believe, wrote that song. And uh, I've seen a couple different versions of the words of it, and they vary just slightly, but the one that, that stands out to me is the part where it says, and I heard a voice on the top of the mountain. On, on the, I think when he sings it, he sings, and I heard a sweet voice from the top of the mountain. And that's, that's really beautiful, isn't it? And that's really nice. Anybody else got one they want to sing or something they want to say? Testify or anything? Talk about how good God has been to you. I know he's been good to me. He's been good to me over the years. Much, much better than I deserve. If not, then go ahead and turn in your Bibles uh, to Genesis chapter 31, verse 20. Genesis 31, verse 20. Today I'm going to talk about unawares, unawares and ignorant. And uh, well, there's times in our lives that we all have things that we're unaware of. Sometimes we just don't know what's going on on stuff. On stuff. Now, uh, on the way to Florida uh, some years ago, me and Terry stopped over in Georgia. We do quite a, a lot to stay at a hotel instead of just driving all the way through. And we were watching uh, a little TV. They were watching a local news uh, broadcast, and they had a, a we were interviewing a young man. And uh, uh, they said he, he, always, he said, I always went swimming in this one pond. I went there since I was a young kid. I always, always went in there, you know, and there was, was no problems there. But recently he went there, and as usual, he went up and he jumped right into the water without even thinking about anything, and he was unaware that something had made a home in there that hadn't before. And uh, as he swam around, he said he felt claws on the back of his, of his back, big claws on the back of his back. And he said he discovered that about a 10-foot long alligator was hanging on to his back. And he tried to put his whole mouth, his whole head in his mouth, and it couldn't. And, uh, and so it got, it, it got off of him then and swam away. And he did get out of there, some serious bite marks, got a bunch of stitches. But he obviously would not have gotten in there if he had been aware that that uh, alligator had made its home in it. He actually wouldn't have gone there. Sometimes it pays to be aware of what's, where you're at and what's going on. A lot of times it does. Jeremiah in his, in his book was talking about how futile it is to cross or to try uh, to fight against God. It is. It's, it's pointless to try to do that. We as humans can't do that. But he says this in Jeremiah 50, 24. I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware Thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against God. You can't fight against God. Now, there are cases when it's better not to know uh, what's going on, not to know about something, being unaware of it. If you knew the time of your death, if you knew you were going to die at a certain time, you'd spend all the rest of the time you had worrying about that, wouldn't you? All of it. You know, actually, the Bible talks about that. Uh, Isaiah went to Hezekiah, and he said, Put your house in order, because you're going to die. He told him, did he take that lightly? Did he take that as a good thing? He didn't, did he? The Bible says they turned his face over to the wall. He was mourning, he was weeping, and he prayed to God for more time, and God did give him 15 more years. 
But you know, if we knew about our death, if we knew, if we knew the sorrows, if we knew the griefs and the heartache that we would have to go through on this life, in this life, you know, that would take away some of the joy that we had in the times in between. Whether we'd be concerned about this next thing coming up or this next thing that would happen. We couldn't enjoy our happiness. There are times when there are those that take advantage of someone not being aware of something or someone being unaware of things or circumstances. A con man, for instance, he's, he's, he's counting on you not being aware of his, his scheme. The devil's counting on you not being aware. We have talked about, spoken about, and we've read about many times in the Bible about Jacob and how that he married Rachel and Leah and their two handmaidens and how that they all lived with uh, Jacob's father-in-law, Laban or Laban. And that uh, we, we understand that they had made a deal for, uh, for what they would give for wages and that uh, Laban uh, cheated uh, or tried to cheat Jacob ten times. He said, you changed my wages ten times. And there came a point when Jacob just had enough of it. He got tired of it. So he packed up his stuff, packed up all of his animals. He got everything in order, got all of his family, his wives, and all of his children, and he left. Uh, you know, when Jabin found out about that, he was furious when he found out what Jacob did. So I told you to go to Genesis 31, 20. It says this, And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled, and he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount of Gilead, in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and he said unto him, Take heed that you speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob, and now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, in the mount, and Laban and his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said unto Jacob, What hast thou done that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives with the sword? So Jacob, uh, he left unawares. He didn't let him know what he was doing because he didn't want him to. He wanted to get uh, out on the road before he knew what was going on, obviously, and uh, and he just wanted to get away from him. Turn over on to. Uh, uh, Numbers chapter 35, Numbers chapter 35, verse 11. Numbers 35, 11. There are things that we do that we're not aware of what we're doing. We do things, you know, not aware of what the circumstances are going to be or what's going to happen uh, or the outcome's going to be of it. And most of the time, it's no, it's no big deal. It doesn't uh, amount to too much. You know, there's no, uh, uh, no real harm done, but other times... Uh, other times it can have serious consequences if we're not aware of something. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard this on the news lately, but there was a truck traveling northbound on, on 75 there a few days ago, and it lost a wheel off the truck. It came across, uh, he was going northbound, and it came across the, the highway he was on, bounced over the, the median, the concrete barrier, into the other lane, into the southbound lane, and struck a car. And it went through the windshield. It bounced up, went through the windshield of that car and killed a young lady, 18 year old, an 18-year-old girl. Now here's a quote from the mother, of the, the mother of that young lady that was killed. And she said, uh, maybe the driver was unaware that their tire was loose. I don't know. But she said maybe he was unaware that, he was, that it was loose. And as far as I know, uh, just the other day when I was looking at this, they have not identified the driver of the truck yet. They, have, they don't know who he was. That driver was definitely unaware of a few things, wasn't he? He was unaware that the wheel was loose, obviously. He was unaware that it was going to come off. He was unaware that it would go across the highway. And he was unaware that it would strike and kill someone. Now, he, he probably knows by now, he probably at least suspects that was my tire that came off there. He hasn't turned him in, himself in yet, as, as far as I know. And he's probably worried about the crimes he might be charged with at this point. Uh, and, and the reason I'm talking about that is this. When God gave Israel the law, when he gave them the, the Ten Commandments and the other commandments, he had in statutes in that law that if somebody killed somebody accidentally or unawares or ignorantly uh, killed someone. In Numbers 35, 11, it says this. Then you shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may uh, flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. So, you know, it is, it is, that, that case is a perfect case right there. That guy didn't set out to kill anybody. He didn't mean to kill anybody. It was an, it was an accidental death, and uh, he didn't mean to do that. And then God uh, left provisions for that. Go ahead and turn over to Psalm chapter 35, verse 4. 
There are five verses. There's five verses in the Bible that deal with that law that I just talked about with the accidental death. There's, there's two in the book of Numbers, uh, one in Deuteronomy, and two in the book of Joshua. You know, people do things unaware sometimes. sometimes bad things and things happen. But sometimes there's people that do things, very evil things, very evil deeds on purpose and maliciously. They kill people because they just don't like something they do. Something about them, maybe something they've done or something they, they kill them for that. They, set, they, uh, they uh, harm people for gain, you know, just to get uh, something that they have. Uh, they set out to destroy people for jealousy and envy of them. We see that stuff all the time. And they and they'll might harm somebody just to quiet them lest their own wicked deeds uh, be made known. And we know King David. We've read about King David. And we know that King David was a great man, wasn't he? He was beloved of God. His name means beloved. Beloved of the people, but not everybody loved him, of course. David did some bad things, didn't he? Yes, some bad, sinful things. And maybe we haven't done as bad of things as David did. But we're all still sinners. Every one of us are still sinners. You know, David had some enemies. I mean, even a man beloved as David had some enemies. And uh, some in his own very house. You know, right in his own very household. Of his own family. Uh, there were those that wanted what he had. There were those that wanted to be king in his stead. Uh, there were some probably that, that figured David had done something wrong against them. And there were also um, some, some that probably didn't like the way that David ruled Israel, overruled Israel. Now, you can't please all the people all the time, can you? doesn't matter what you do. You can't. You can try, but you can't do it. You know, David had, no doubt, had guards around him protecting him, didn't he? He probably had somebody that tasted his food for him in case it was poison. Uh, but you know what? David was a mighty warrior of his own self, wasn't he? He'd done some great things. He'd killed the, the giant Goliath. He'd killed a, a giant here when he was just a youth. So David was a, was a strong guy. But you know what David did when he, when he thought about his enemies? He turned to God, didn't he? He wanted God to catch them off guard and to punish them in the ways, uh, in the way that they had then seek to punish him. In Psalm 35, uh, verses 4 through 8, says this, let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that divides my hurt. Let them be a chef before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause they have hid for me their net in the pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him in unawares. And let his net that he had hid catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. So, he, so he's asking God, let them be unaware of what's going to happen to them. And you know what? The sinner's unaware of what's going to happen to him. Either. We talk about, uh, we talk about uh, karma now. And karma happens to people sometimes. Don't you? you see them videos and stuff where people uh, will do things and right away something happens to them. That just... Karma, they say, but the Bible says that whatsoever a man soweth, that so he also reap. And that, uh, you know, that's where karma comes from. Go and turn over to uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. Hebrews 13, 1. You know, most of us like to gossip if we admit it. We like to gossip. We know it's wrong. We know it's a sin. We know it's a wrong thing to do. It's iniquity, but we still like to do it. And we even do it within our own family sometimes, and our own friends, we do it against them. We try to justify it sometimes by saying things, well, if it's true, it's not really gossip. And you know what we all do, just about all do, especially, especially, uh, us of the Appalachian uh, nationality, we'll do this. If we say something about somebody and we feel a little bad about them, we will say, God bless his little soul. Yeah. You know, we all do that just about, don't we? I don't think that really helps too much after you've already done that. We don't think it does, but we do it. And sometimes you have to be careful who you're talking about and who you're talking to because you might be talking to a parent by their, about their child, you know. You might be doing that. And, you know, if, if our chi child misbehaves, and a lot of our children misbehave at different times, if they do, we don't like anybody else to point it out, do we? We just don't like that. Uh, I think, I, I think I've messed myself up here, got, off, got out of line here or something. But anyway, we don't, we don't, we don't want anybody to point that out. And, and sometimes we're not even aware of how bad our kids actually are, maybe. Maybe they're better around us. I don't know if you remember uh, Leave it to Beaver with Eddie Haskell. 
Oh, you know, to the, to the parents, he acted like he was the greatest kid in the world, and then he was as funky as he could be uh, when he got away from them. So maybe our kids are like that, and we just don't even know it, man. We don't know how bad they are. Uh, the Bible warns us, though, that we should treat everyone, everyone with kindness. We should treat everyone with kindness, no matter who they are and wherever you meet them. And it says this in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. How about that? Entertain angels. Go ahead and turn back over to the Old Testament, back to Numbers chapter 15, verse 22. Numbers 15, 22. Another word that the Bible uses for the word unawares is the word ignorance or ignorant. I know when we were younger, we would talk about people who were ignorant. We'd talk like they were stupid. You know, you're ignorant. You're stupid. But that's not really what it even means. In reality, it just only means you're unaware of something or you're uninformed about something. And I've heard this. I've heard this all my life that they say that ignorance of the law is not a, a defense. It's not a good defense. It's not, it's not defensible like that. And I looked it up on Google. You know, if you read it on the Internet, it's just true. Uh -huh. <laughs> Most of the time. Some of the time. Anyway, what it said on there was uh, uh, being unaware of a law when you break it does is not a viable defense. It's not. Because really when you look at it, folks, who wouldn't say if they got caught robbing the bank? Well, I didn't know it was illegal to rob a bank. You know, everybody, anybody could do that. And I'm sure people do try to do stuff like that. And you know, uh, Job, I mean, everybody's familiar with Job and the struggles and the troubles. And he had the troubles a good man, wasn't he? The Bible says that he was a good man. The Bible says that he was perfect and upright in his generation. And what, Jesus, what it talks about here is Job sacrificed, didn't he? He sacrificed regularly every day, but not only sacrificed for himself, but Job sacrificed for his children, didn't he? He said, perhaps, perhaps they have sinned and they've charred God in their heart or, or sinned in their heart somehow. So he's thinking maybe they sinned ignorantly. Now, we talked about earlier about a, a law that God had made for those that had killed ignorantly or, or uh, unawares. And now it's talking about somebody that has sinned uh, ignorantly. Now, this is different. This is, we'll see this, how this is different. In Numbers 15, uh, 22 through 29, I think it is, says this. And if you have erred and not observed all these commandments which the Lord has spoken unto Moses... Even all that the Lord hath commanded you by the hand of Moses from the day that the Lord commanded Moses and henceforth uh, among your generations. Then it shall be, it ought be committed, then it shall be, if ought be committed by ignorance without the knowledge of the congregation, that all the congregations shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering, for a sweet savor unto the Lord, with his meat offering and his drink offering according to the manner, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel, and it shall be forgiven them, uh, for it is ignorance. And they shall bring their offering, a sacrifice made by fire to the Lord, and their sin offering before the Lord for their ignorance. And it shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of Israel, and the stranger that sojourneth among them, seeing all the people were in ignorance. And if any soul sin through ignorance that he shall bring a she go to the first year for a sin offering and the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly when he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord to make an atonement for him and it shall be forgiven him you shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them so it's saying here that's a little different than what it was saying with the one that killed ignorantly. But if you sin ignorantly, you sin unawares, you still have to sacrifice for it. You still have to offer an offering for it. And the whole congregation, if, if, uh, if I sin, then if we, were, if we were all Jews, and if I'm the one committing the sin, you all have to go and sacrifice as well just to get clear of that. So it's a little different than uh, just killing ignorantly. You still, just as the law is today, ignorance is no excuse under the, under the law. It's was an excuse under the law as, as well then, either. Go ahead and turn over to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. 1 Peter 2, 15. 1 Peter 2, 15. You know, not having, not having an understanding has been a downfall uh, of many, of many. Ignorance of who God is and what God expects from us, it can really hold us back in our Christian walk. 
Some men in their willful ignorance, they willfully are ignorant of things. They try to say that God was created by man instead of man creating God. I mean, people will say stupid stuff like that. I'm just going to read from two, uh, for you something from 1 Peter. It says, uh, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts and your ignorance, the unrepentant, you know, the unrepentant, unsaved sinner, he's full of foolishness. He's full of ignorance. They're talking about stuff or trying to talk about things that they don't understand. They neither know nor understand. Now, now, here's the thing. We as Christians, we as born-again believers, we're supposed to have an answer to anyone that asks us about the hope, the hope that lies within us. We're supposed to have that answer, always ready for an answer. Our, question, our Christian walk and the way that we as Christians, our conversation, that should never, ever uh, give uh, the non-believer fuel to attack the Word of God, the Gospel of God. It should never. We should always... Uh, you know, have a good testimony. We should always know what we're talking about. And we should always know what the Bible says. We should be able, as Paul does, to persuade. You know, Paul would go into the synagogue and he would try to persuade them about Jesus Christ. We should always uh, be, have a good argument to persuade with. I'm not telling you just to go out and fight with everybody you see about everything. I'm just saying we should, all, we should know what we're talking about. Uh, 1 Peter 2.15. 1 Peter 2.15 says this. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. You know, you should be able to tell them things about God, shouldn't you? You should be able to tell them what God says about this. Anything anything that, that uh, we're asked about, we should say, well, God says this in the Bible, you should do it this way. Go ahead and turn over to 2 Corinthians 2.10. 2 Corinthians 2.10. You know, there's a saying that says, keep your friends close, but your, your enemies closer. And uh, we should always be aware of where our enemies are, who they are, first of all, where they are and what they're up to, what they're doing. And as a born-again believer uh, in, the, in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we have enemies. We definitely have enemies. That should be no secret to us. We know, we know the devil is. This world's our enemy, and the devil and his angels are definitely our enemy. The devil, the Bible says, is subtle, and he's wild. He's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. He's like the magician with a trick up his sleeve. And he knows just when to pull them out. Just when to use them right with you. He only uses them against you. He uses it on our lust. He uses it on our pride. He uses it on our greed and our envy. And he also uses it on our stubbornness and our ability not to want to forgive somebody. In 2 Corinthians 2.10-11, 2 Corinthians 2.10, it says, To whom you, you, forg you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave it, forgave I it in the person of Christ. He goes on to say this, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So Satan will use anything he can against you. Your hard-heartedness, your, uh, you're not wanting to forgive somebody, your stubbornness, he'll use that against you. He knows exactly what we stand, what our problems are, don't we? And, and, you know, we all have problems. We don't, get, we don't get to be perfect people after we become Christians. We still sin. Apostle Paul, who was the greatest Christian probably ever, said that he, what he don't want to do is what he ends up doing. What he would do, he don't do. You know, and, and, if, and if a guy like him that devoted his life completely to Christ and gave everything up for it, if he can't do right all the time, then, then we all will all certainly have a hard time with it. Go ahead and turn over to Acts chapter 17, verse 23. Acts 17, 23. Now the Apostle Paul was just speaking of, he was, he said of himself that he was the Apostle to the Gentiles. He said that he was, and he went to preach to the heathen nation. He only went to preach to them, though, after the Jews rejected the message of Christ. Now Paul and the other uh, Apostles, they all had the same message, and that was this, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, or spend eternity in hell. They all had that same message, didn't they? They all preached that same message. The Bible says this, that the Jews require a sign, but that the Greeks, and the Greeks are the Gentiles, the heathens, the Greeks are those that seek after wisdom. Now Paul, he was an educated man, wasn't he? He enjoyed a dual citizenship. He was born a Jew and he was raised a Roman, so he knew both things about all, he knew everything about all of them. He said this of himself. I have become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might save some. 
Paul went up to a place called Mars Hill. Went up to a place called Mars Hill. And Mars Hill uh, was where the smartest, smartest of the Greeks, smartest of the people of the, of the day gathered together. And the Bible said they gathered together to share a new thing or to, or to learn of a new thing. So they just went there to do something, uh, you know, always to hear something, hear some kind of news or to find out something different. In Acts 17, 23, it says this. And this is Paul of Mars Hill. It says, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship him, I declare unto you. So they were worshiping God, but they didn't know who he was. They didn't know nothing about him. Uh, and Paul says, I came to declare him on you. You're, ignor you're worshiping me ignorantly. I'm going I'm to give you some uh, information about it. Go and turn over to Luke chapter 21, verse 34. Luke 21, 34. Now, you know that we always try to do this, and we talk about this quite a few times at the end of church. We try to warn people that are not saved not to put it off too long, not to wait too long, because your, your time's going to wear off on you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to run out on you. Always be aware that your life could end at any moment. Now, that young lady that I was speaking about this morning, she didn't know when she got in that car, and she started back home that her life was going to end there. She had no idea that was going to happen to her. Uh, this world's going to end. This whole world's going to end. The Bible tells us that. I believe what the Bible says. The whole world and everyone in it's going to be. It's going, it's going to go off here. And, and that's going to be at a time, a day, an hour that we know not. We don't know. Now, only God in heaven is the only one that knows that. Don't let it catch you unawares. Don't let that catch you unaware. Uh, but Jesus is coming back to this earth. We know that. He's coming back to this earth. Don't let that catch you unaware. He'll, be ready. Be vigilant, the Bible says. Be sober and be aware. Luke uh, 21, 34. Luke 21, 34 says this. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, which is overindulgence, and drunkenness, and cares of this life. So And so that day comes upon you unawares. If you're not ready, it's going to come anyway. Eh? Yep. It's going to come anyway. Go ahead and turn over your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Dale, you can come on up. If we don't read the Bible, if we don't study as the Bible tells us to, to read and study yourself to prove a workman not, need not be ashamed unto God. If we don't meditate on the things we hear, on the things that we read, if we don't, we'll be ignorant of what God expects of us. If we don't tell the lost people about Jesus Christ, I mean, that's our duty to do that. If we don't do that, we don't talk about His saving grace, then they'll be unaware. They'll be unaware of certain things. They'll be unaware of the faith that awaits them. They'll be unaware that hell is a real place. With countless people already in it, already, you can even count the amount of people that's in there. And the Bible says that hell's enlarging our borders. Hell's getting making itself bigger all the time to receive more. Because what's it say about that Broadway? Many's going to enter in there. Sure. And that's a way that leads to, to destruction. Uh, in, in, it leads into an eternity of damnation where there's no turning back, there's no returning from that. Once you're there, you're there. When the tree falls, there's so alive. They also are going to be unaware that this, about this, that that sweet little child or that kindly old grandmother, they'll go to hell the same as that murderer, the same as that rapist, the same as that people that's done horrible, horrible crime. crime because the Bible says for all have come short of a sin, come short of the glory of God. All of us have, every single one of me, you, everybody has. Don't let that day catch you unaware. Don't let it catch you unaware. The Bible gives you, gives you plenty of ammunition against it, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Be prepared, it says. Be ready. And do what Paul tells us here in this, uh, in this uh, uh, book of Romans. And we read this every time at the end here because we're trying to warn people. We're trying to warn people so they're not unaware. So that they know this day is coming. But it says this in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now he never told us to spend your whole time, whole life doing good works. And we talked a lot about works in this morning and in Sunday school. We talked, is good works good to do? Sure. Absolutely. Sure. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And they're gonna help you out. They're not gonna get you into heaven. But when you get to heaven, you'll have some treasures that are laid up for you, won't you? 
So it's good for you to do that kind of stuff, but you have to do what it says here. You have to confess Jesus with your mouth, and then you have to believe. You have to believe that he, that he was raised from the dead. Uh, here in verse 13 it says this, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. If you do that, folks, if you call upon the name of the Lord, if you believe in His holy name, if you believe that He died and uh, rose again on the third point day, you'll be aware. You'll be made aware, won't you? And when you're made aware, what can you do then? You can make other folks aware. That's for sure. You can make your children aware. Just, just think about this, guys. If you, if you don't, don't try to get your children, your grandchildren, the rest of your family, your friends, they're going to die and go to heaven. They're going to spend eternity there. Can you imagine anything even worse than that? What a horrible thought. What about this? What if you don't get saved? You don't get your children saved. You don't get your grandchildren saved. What if you stand there? For God and he said you're not saved and because you're not saved look at your whole family because when he was talking when he was talking there when Peter was talking to him he said you and thy house will be saved why were they because then he said that they went and talked to the whole house and they talked to the whole house they got the whole house saved they weren't saved because the man Peter was talking to was saved right. they were saved because they believed in Jesus Christ but you as especially you men as the head of your houses you're the watchman that's for sure. You got you got a big responsibility on your yes, shoulders, sir. and you're going to be held responsible. Yes, sir. Absolutely. As, as you can all stand up if you're able to. If you're not, you remain seated if you if you don't feel like stand up. But stand up if you're able to. And we're going to sing a song of invitation. If God has spoken to you, if you haven't made uh, your election sure, then uh, come on up, and we'll show you exactly how to do. It if you don't quite understand it yet, and, and if you just want to come up and tell the world that hey, I'm saved. I believe in Jesus Christ and I'm going to heaven. You don't do that if you want to do that. If you want to rededicate your life, come up and do that. We'll be glad to, to assist you with that and help you and talk with you about that. And let everyone know what you've done and what you want to do and what you will do. Uh, but if, if uh, let's go ahead and sing the song of invitation. If God's spoken to you in any way, come on up and we'll try to help you with it if you can. Just as I am. Saved as well, Lord. So 
I pray that you'll just help us and, uh, and just uh, open their eyes to the fact that they do need a, a Savior before it's everlasting too late, because what a terrible, terrible thing to wake up one day to be standing before that judgment seat of Christ there when Amen. when you got no excuse. There is no heavenly bailing there to plead That's your case blessing, or nothing. Lord. Jesus is just the righteous judge, and Amen. where the tree falls, so shall it lay. We've heard it many, many times. Lord. So we pray that you'll help us to reach them or someone to, in some way to reach them with that uh, message of salvation before it's everlasting too late. Father, once again, now, everybody under the sound of our voice and on this social media, they've heard that today. Amen. So I pray that you impress it, if they are lost, that you impress it upon their hearts that before it's too late, Lord, that they'll make that decision. Amen, Lord. Because failure to make that decision, in fact, is, uh, seals their faith. Yeah. And I know I wouldn't want no part of a devil's hell, Lord, and no. I don't think they would either. I think if no. anybody had one second, if they was just flashed over hell for once, they'd change them for the rest of their life. That's the Lord. Father, we just pray now as we depart that you'll just go with us down the, you know, as we travel the highways and <clears throat> as we do our work this week or whatever we do, Lord, we just pray that you'll be with us. Help us to be a light to those round about us. Help us to uh, spread your word to somebody that may not know you, Lord, in the free part of their soul. Yes, Lord. Once again, Lord, remember all those that's on our prayer list and all those that prayer was mentioned for earlier today. Just bless them, Lord, and visit their uh, situations. Yeah. Father, we want you just to uh, go with us now as we depart and bring us back here once again, Lord, when it would be your uh, divine will. In Jesus' name we humbly ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks. See you next week. Randall, where's Dexter? North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>